we have a natural curiosity to touch plants that look slightly weird. Extraordinary habits. But after listening to this video, you may be a bit more mindful that you shouldn't. From a fungus that can cause your organs to fail, to a flower that bursts into flames at random, here are 15 of the strangest plants you should never touch. Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos every day. That being said, let's begin. Number 15, Hydnellum pecky. Mushrooms are generally quite ugly, that's a given. They're often brown, wrinkly, and not all that pleasing on the senses. But if you find yourself peering down at a beautiful pink fungus, then you may have stumbled across Hydnellum pecky. Hydnellum pecky goes by the name of Devil's Tooth, Strawberries and Cream, The Bleeding Tooth Fungus, and Red Juice Tooth. All very original, we know. When this fungus is young, it's a brilliant shade of pink and red that grows around coniferous trees either on its own or in vibrant masses. One once it ages, though, it becomes that more boring shade of brown we expect from a fungus when it matures. Hydnellum pecky is found in North America, Europe, and Asia. More recently, it has popped up in Korea and Iran. So why is it a plant that you shouldn't touch? We know it can be hard to resist because it's so pretty, but it can also be messy. They can bleed a bright red fluid, which can prove to be a nuisance in the absence of wet wipes. This fungus is not toxic, but it sure is inconvenient to touch while wearing white clothing. Number 14, Death Cap. Foraging has been a popular way to get food for generations. And even though we know we have supermarkets, there's nothing quite like heading out into the wilderness and collecting your own snacks. But if you live in California or anywhere that death cap mushrooms grow, then don't be in too much of a hurry to make that big pot of mushroom soup. The death cap mushroom is a poisonous mushroom that is often mistaken for the harmless and edible patty straws and kakora mushrooms. It's so similar that even expert mycologists don't always know whether the mushroom they have picked is a young death cap or a mature type of the edible variety. They have round yellow and green caps, a smooth top in the shape of a cup, and gills on the underside to help the mushroom reproduce. Some of these features also appear on fungi of the edible variety. The difference is death caps can kill you. While you might feel fine, a toxin from the mushroom is slowly damaging your liver cells. You might then experience vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and fluid loss. Eventually, you may suffer from liver failure and even death. Every year, dozens of people are treated for death cap poisoning, and many succumb to their illness. It might just be best to buy fresh mushrooms from your local grocery store to avoid the risk. Number 13, Conocybe Phalaris. During late fall to midwinter, you may stumble across the Conocybe Phalaris California fungi in scattered soil near woody debris. This delicious-looking mushroom may produce visions in your head of mushroom soups and steak and mushroom pies, but it shouldn't. Instead, it should evoke images of hospital visits and illnesses. The Conocybe Phalaris mushroom is a butterscotch to brown-colored fungus with gills and a broad cup on the top. If you didn't know any better, you'd think it was a delicious and nutritious treat to fill hungry tummies. But the only thing your tummy is going to be feeling is sick. This mushroom contains deadly amatoxins. Even cooking the fungus doesn't get rid of them. If you consume this mushroom, you can experience liver and kidney damage, not to mention headaches, dizziness, respiratory tract irritation, coughing, nausea, back pain, and more. Fortunately for hunters and gatherers, the Conocybe phalaris is not all that common, which means the chances of mistaking it for an edible type is slim. Slim, but not impossible. Take care while out foraging by bringing along your local mushroom expert or a handy book on mushroom varieties that won't kill you. Number 12, Clathrus archeri. At first glance, Clathrus archeri, also known as octopus stinkhorn, maybe I'll call it that, looks like a hand coming out of the ground, like some kind of nightmarish cemetery scene. The reality might be a little less frightening. Here's a hint, it's fungus. But it's still not a plant we recommend you touch. Treat it like it really is the hand from a corpse protruding from the ground and recoil in horror. The Clath octopus stinkhorn is a lilac to brown fungus with four to seven arms that curve outward with pinkish red wrinkles. They grow in shaded gardens, plant nurseries, and moist areas. They also tend to thrive during the humid, warmer months of the year. 
While the octopus stink horn is not poisonous, it's just not very nice. Imagine dinner from the worst cook in your family, but ten times more awful. They are edible in the egg stage, but the fetid smell of decaying flesh is enough to put you off even giving them a nibble. The scent is that awful that flies linger around this fungus. Most people don't even want this fungus in their garden, let alone on their dinner plate. Number 11. Stinging Nettle we have a love-hate relationship with Stinging Nettle. On the one hand, we don't want to touch it, but on the other, we know it can give some fantastic health benefits, so we kinda want to. Stinging Nettle is a perennial plant that, as the name suggests, causes stinging when you touch it. The stems and leaves of the plant have little hairs that pierce the skin and cause itchy, burning rashes that can last up to half a day in humans. Some animals fare a little worse, with some dogs having been poisoned by running through large thickets of stinging nettle which can grow over six feet tall. But even though they're a nasty plant that causes no end of discomfort, they are also quite good for you. When you boil the young plants, you can form an herbal medicine or create ingredients for use in cosmetics and textiles. Some people also use the roots as a diuretic, and the leaves for tea to treat diabetes, gout, arthritis, and hay fever. So we're not gonna say don't touch stinging nettle, but we are gonna say at least wear gloves. Number 10. Belladonna Plant. Are you having trouble sleeping? Then the Belladonna Plant is for you. Also known as Deadly Nightshade, this troublesome plant causes you to not only feel tired, but go into a coma. Whether or not you wake up is up to your body's ability to fight back. Eating belladonna plants causes Atropa belladonna poisoning, which then leads to a condition called anticholinergic syndrome. Those who consume the plant experience dilated pupils and light sensitivity, headaches, loss of balance, a rash, hallucinations, convulsions, and trouble breathing. While it used to be used in the cosmetic world and some medicines, alternatives are definitely more of a preference today. The problem with the belladonna plant is that it looks harmless, which is why many people accidentally ingest it. As it has hallucinogenic properties, some people may even choose to swallow it. It has cherry-like berries that have a sweet taste and a harmless looking plant that almost says, eat me. But we really advise that you don't. Unfortunately, because of how delicious belladonna looks, they pose a significant danger to children who stumble across them out in nature. Number 9. Porcupine Tomato most people have a love-hate relationship with the porcupine tomato, and all we can tell you is that its name is very fitting. It goes by the name of Litchi Tomato, or Morel de Balbus, and has been a firm family favorite in America since the 19th century. The Litchi Tomato produces dark red, cherry-sized tomatoes that have a rich and unusual sour cherry flavor. Given how palatable they are, they are the preferred choice for sorbets, wine, sauce, jam, and even fruit tarts. So if this tomato is so delicious and versatile, then why shouldn't you touch it? Well, you can, but you're gonna get injured. It's not called a porcupine tomato for no reason. While the tomato itself is harmless, it's the thorny casing that causes all the problems. The plant and tomato tops are covered in thorns, which makes it a less than fun experience to pick them when the time is right. Such is their discomfort that people even grow them just to stop animals from venturing into their vegetable gardens. We're sure you can understand now why some people have a a difficult relationship with this fruit. Number 8. Fraxinella. Fraxinella. It's not a very telling name for a plant, is it? It doesn't tell you whether it's poisonous, whether it has any secrets, whether you can eat it, use it, or smell it. But you will certainly work out what this plant has to hide before long. Fraxinella, also known as the gas plant, is a plant from the citrus family that's native to North America, Asia, and Southern Europe. Unlike its citrus family relatives, this plant will only produce blossoms, but it has a few cards up its sleeves to play so that it's not as dull as it might sound. During intense heat in the summer months, the Fraxinella plant will release oils that smell like lemon. If you touch these oils, you'll likely experience uncomfortable contact dermatitis. Fortunately, this will go away over time. But it's not the uncomfortable rash that makes this a strange plant that you shouldn't touch. The oils it releases are incredibly volatile. Want to know how much? They can ignite. All it takes is a hot day and this plant throws a tantrum. It will ignite into a fireball and quickly dies away as if nothing has happened. No one knows for sure how this plant manages to go about its business after having just burst into flames, but you certainly don't want to be near it when it happens. Number 7. Giant Hogweed 
There are two reasons why you shouldn't touch the giant hogweed plant, also known as Heraclea mantagazinum. Say that three times fast. Firstly, you shouldn't touch it because it's unlawful to sell it, propagate it, or distribute it. It is a noxious weed in Ohio, and no one wants it. It is one of the most unloved plants in the state, and that state hates plants. It crowds out native plants, spreads like nobody's business, and can escape an ornamental garden and set up camp around the countryside with no problem at all. If it were beneficial, valuable, or in any way attractive, then that wouldn't be a problem. But this plant is just awful. Which leads us to the second reason why you shouldn't touch it. Its sap can cause severe burns. When you touch it, the sap causes a condition called phytophotodermatitis, which makes your skin sensitive to UV light. Blistering and swelling can follow, not to mention permanent scarring. If you happen to get sap in your eyes, we suggest you don't, then it can also cause temporary or permanent blindness. So yeah, don't touch this plant or you'll regret it. Number six, Death Camus. Death Camus. Well, the name is pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Out of all the springtime plants to grace the planet, the Death Camus is one of the worst. And we're not being dramatic, it is a real pain. The Death Camus is a plant that you can find in British Columbia all the way to southwestern Saskatchewan. Its similarity to onion bulbs has resulted in many accidental poisonings, and animals have died because they don't know any better. Eating the bulbs, flowers, and flower buds can all result in poisoning. Not only is this plant poisonous to humans, but to poultry, bees, cattle, sheep, horses, and the list goes on. Basically, if anything eats this plant, they're gonna get sick. Poisoning symptoms can vary from one animal and human to the next. Humans, especially children, often experience problems with breathing, low blood pressure, diarrhea, drowsiness, dilated pupils, and vomiting. A coma and death have been known to follow. Number five, Mansion Neal Tree. The mansion eel tree may be endangered, but if you eat any fruit from it, you might be extinct. This rare tropical plant is one of the most poisonous trees on Earth, and it's found in South Florida, Central America, Northern South America, and the Caribbean. Fortunately, it's rare, and many trees have signs attached to them to warn people of the risks. So what are the risks of eating fruit from the mansion eel tree or touching it? Unfortunately, someone had to find out firsthand so we could know, and we feel pretty bad about that. Radiologist Nicola Strickland wrote an article in the British Medical Journal about what she experienced. She took a bite from a piece of fruit and noticed a peppery feeling in her mouth. That feeling intensified until it became burning, tearing, and tight. After a couple of hours, she could barely swallow, and the excruciating pain offered the sense of an obstructive pharyngeal lump. The apples on the tree are toxic, and we now know thanks to Nicola. But so are all parts of the tree. The bark, leaves, and sap are all dangerous. They can scorch your skin and even damage the paint on cars. Fortunately, contact with this tree is not always fatal, but it can be, so why take the risk? Stay far, far away. Number four, Doll's Eyes. When summer turns to fall, the woodlands and meadows throughout the U.S. offer an abundance of delicious treats for foragers to tuck into. Everything from oyster mushrooms to blackberries and walnuts are there for the taking. And there's nothing quite like heading home with a bounty of natural snacks that didn't cost a dime. But amongst those safe and delicious treats are some that just look safe and delicious. They're really there just to test you. White baneberry, also known as doll's eyes, is one of them. They are white with black dots to resemble the eyes of china dolls and have purple stems. They are an attractive plant, but not one you should be in a hurry to taste. The clue is in the name, baneberry. Bane means killer or slayer, and that never means anything good when you give a plant that title. All parts of the baneberry are poisonous, including the roots. If eaten, they can cause cramps, a burning sensation in your throat, diarrhea, dizziness, and hallucinations. Eat enough of them and you can even die from cardiac arrest. Pretty to look at, deadly to touch. Remember that. Number three, Jimson Weed. The Jimson Weed is a plant with white or purple flowers, jagged leaves, and green fruit that grow upon maturity. 
It also grows to around 5 feet high throughout the U.S. between May and September. To look at it, it's relatively inconspicuous, but you would be surprised at how many curious teenagers know more about this plant than any other. It has hallucinogenic properties that people are too curious to find out more about, and the result of that curiosity can be Jimson weed poisoning. Sure, you can hallucinate after consuming Jimson weed, but you can also experience a range of other side effects that are less than pleasant. People who have consumed the plant be it on purpose or accidental, can experience shaking, mumbling, confusion, dilated pupils, blurred vision, hypothermia, and dry mucous membranes. In more extreme cases, respiratory arrest and seizures can occur. Symptoms can persist for as long as two days, but efforts to remove it from the gastrointestinal tract can minimize its effects. So while hallucinating may be something that seems like fun, it's really not, and this plant should be avoided at all costs. Number 2. Castor Oil Plant Whether you ingest, inject, or inhale ricin from the seeds of the castor oil plant, you're not going to have a good time. To be honest, that's a little bit of an understatement. You're going to have an awful time. It's important to understand that the castor oil plant itself is not the problem. The plant is ornamental and appears throughout the Western world, and it's necessary for the production of castor oil. But the protein in the seeds of the castor oil plant is so toxic that it was once almost used as a war weapon. Ricin is a toxic protein that stops your body from being able to make its own protein. As a result, your body can shut down. If you do survive ricin poisoning, organ damage is typical. Those who ingest ricin can experience vomiting and diarrhea, dehydration, a bloody cough, fluid in the lungs, and eventual failure of organs before death. Fortunately, the accidental ingestion of ricin from the castor oil plant is rare. You would have to take the mash mixture of castor oil seeds and carry out the process of chromatography, including dissolving it in liquid or gas, to produce it. It's not something you can create by accident. Number 1. English Yew Tree the English yew tree is a beautiful ornamental tree to look at, but just to look at. Whatever you do, don't touch it. Every part of this tree, aside from the outer red flesh of the berries that grow on it, is poisonous. The bark, needles, inner berry seed, the lot. Taxine alkaloids are present in most parts of this tree, and as little as 50 grams of yew needles can be enough to be fatal. Those who consume more than that amount go into cardiogenic shock and don't wake up, even after resuscitation attempts are made. Once ingested, there is thought to be no therapy that exists to stop death from eventually happening. Extracorporeal membrane oxygen therapy has appeared as a treatment for some patients, but it's not known whether it was effective due to a non-fatal dose or because it's a surefire antidote. The best way to avoid being poisoned by this English yew tree is just not to eat it. Given that it's not food, hopefully that won't prove too challenging to manage. It's probably now time to take stock of your garden and see what hidden dangers are lurking within. Have you seen any of these plants in person or have any of them at home? It might be time to get rid of them once and for all. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!